Rahul, for the retail investor who is convinced on the India story, he doesn't have option to go via the private equity route, right, or invest in the unlisted space. If you were to really sort of draw a comparison to the AI boom, I guess consumer tech is where you are seeing, uh, you know, a perfect sort of alignment with AI, if you will. You think that's a space, even though it's completely fully discovered? You think one needs to keep a close eye on that and that structurally is looking the, like the strong, uh, strong story? It is a strong story and there is definitely a lot of um, a lot of business momentum and a strong business case there. Um, on valuations, I might have my um, own sort of reservations there. But it is it is definitely, now you have to understand that in these kind of situations, valuations always run ahead of reality because people are looking at, you know, uh, not one year, but five, 10, 20 years of profit pools. Uh, and discounting them up front. Uh, when it works out very well, then it looks visionary. When it doesn't, you get hurt very badly. Uh, but often you reach a point in the cycle where, um, you know, there's too much discounting too early. And I think that that um, you might be sort of facing that with a lot of the names. Some of the names are still okay, but um, I think that's one slight challenge. But like I'm saying, people who are using AI in their traditional businesses, Right, which are not well discovered, but you know, you hear managements talking about how they're fundamentally changing something. I mean, I I know a lot of auto ancillary companies, for example, who are using AI and changing energy conversion ratios of um, motors. Um, so these kinds of applications, or people using AI to do predictive um, maintenance work, um, you will see a lot more, you know a broader application base and that's where um, there are much more opportunities and disruptive opportunities even on the listed market i think you'll see a lot of names which uh, fit that criteria